Hello, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to talk about machine learning for everyone. My name is Glenn, Glenn Queen. I'm the president at CSU, California Science and Technology University. My talk is about machine learning core. Okay. Um, that's from my own experience, you know, from my teaching or from my talk with people. You know, even though Everyone's talking about AI, so you can ask these very basic questions. What is AI? And how the machine learns? So that's the two basic questions. And I found most of the time, people may not have a good answers. So I would like to spend a few minutes here, 10 minutes, to just explain these two questions. Hopefully we can uh, go to the next two questions. Uh, one is um, how are you going to evaluate how good a machine learning model works, right? Second one, how are we going to improve the machine learning model? Okay, so the machine learning, I'm going to give you a very simple examples. The first one about the machine learning. So in general, we say the machine learning, you have to learn something, right? So that's uh, what we call the pattern. Anything you want to learn, it could be a model, we call it a model, or call it anything else. So we, in, in a general term, it's just a knowledge. So the machine try to learn something. So what you try to learn, we call it as a pattern. If there's no pattern, you cannot learn. Right? It's a noise. So noise, you cannot learn. It's a random thing. So if we want to learn anything, it has to have a pattern. So machine learning is a learner pattern. So that's a very basic idea. Uh, machine learning try to learn something which has a pattern. It's really a pattern, right? So what is machine learning about? I'll give you a very simple example so everyone can understand. You go to buy a house, so what the agent can tell you? So the agent can tell you, okay, what's the unit price of the house? For example, you say this area, the price, $5 per square foot. So that's one parameter, a model, but tells you very clearly what the price will be for a house. So this house, 1,000 square feet. So the price will be around 500,000. So you can see the machine learning model, or just a model. You have a model, has a parameters, that's a knowledge. And also you can use this model to predict a price of a house. That's a basic about a machine learning and a machine learning model about. With that, you can see the machine learning is not so sophisticated. All you have to do, you have to find a model, learn the things, and then use that for your purpose. It doesn't matter how complicated it will be, even for all the AIs that are about today, it's all based on that kind of uh, um, understanding. Okay, so the first thing uh, about a the machine learning. So now the question is, what's the challenge? Why we think the machine learning could be very uh, sophisticated? So I think the, the problem is the model, where the model comes from. In uh, uh, housing uh, cases, we know this is uh, one parameter, is a linear case, basically based on the square footage. Right? So that's, uh, uh, you calculate the house price. Now, the challenge actually is the model. In this case, once you have to learn the model, you can collect the data. So we call data collections. You know, do, once you have data, you can calculate the average um, the square feet um, price, and then you can do the predictions. So you can see the model is the challenge. Okay, now, uh, you can imagine anything, right? So for example, um, you learn how to um, uh, you know, do any, anything, you know, try to machine to learn those things, and then uh, what model should be used? So that's uh, um, the big thing. I think in the, like in the 80s, when people realized there's a problem, so they come up with like a rule-based model. The rule-based model basically says, okay, if A will be. So that's a rule-based model. Now, it works for some situations, but when you can imagine it's not a genetic models, you cannot apply to any other things. So basically, for quite a long time, AI has no growth. So basically, AI is not practical. 
until like uh, uh, I think in the, uh, in twenty tens when they have the deep learning models, then things been changing. So what's the deep learning model? Before we go to deep learning model, I hope I'll give you two examples to explain what really deep learning model comes from. Okay, so the first one we call the, the Taylor series. So for all the people you memorize your high school math, you the Taylor series. So we say the model or say the function, right? any model function, they can be expanded to a combination of polynomials. Right? So in this case, um, the first segment term is a linear functions. Our housing model uses the first two things, two turns. So that's the, what I'm talking about. Um, you can use the Taylor series. You can kind of uh, understand where the model comes from. Second one, uh, this actually uses uh, the Fourier series. So what it says for any functions is a combination of uh, single frequency waves. Doesn't matter what the function will be. Okay, so any functions. So this is a very powerful statement. Basically, what it says, any models can be decomposed to very single component, rather one single frequency components. So that would be very helpful. Uh, once we know that, we use that for all our engineering design. So with the communications, you know, uh, even for those machines, uh, although I mean the uh, the motors. If you are coming from engineering background, you know this is called a frequency domain uh, analysis. So now, what about our knowledge for the similar things? What we can do for our knowledge for the patterns? Can we really decompose them into a combination of uh, simple components? That's where deep learning comes from. Okay, now, what would be the simplest component? The name called is uh, called neuron. Okay, a lot of people confuse this as a, a human brain neurons. In my opinion, they're not related. Nothing to do with the, neur the actual neurons, you know, brains. It's just the simplest model you can imagine. So what's this model? Look at this model, anyone can understand. You add up all the in inputs, linear combinations, okay? Then you, you plan the linear model. So we know the linear model has limitations. So what are you gonna do? We add a nonlinear component in the end. We call it activation functions. Now, it becomes a nonlinear models. Nonlinear models are much more powerful than linear models. But at the same time, it's so simple, we can understand well. This is how a human brain can understand things. That's why we always want to decompose them into very simple components. This is good enough for us to understand. I hope everyone understands from this model. But what's the problem? not accurate enough. So what are you gonna do? Add more neurons. So all the neurons, add them together, will be more powerful. So that's what uh, we base on this theorem. This theorem says, very important, we call the universal approximation theorem. It says, if you have enough neurons in a single hidden layer, just one single layer, you can achieve, you can achieve whatever the accuracy level you like to, to approximate a function, or we call approximate the things you want to learn, or you can learn a pattern. So that's a very powerful statement. Basically what it says, if I use these uh, very simple neurons, it's nothing to do with uh, uh, the human neurons, you have enough of them, then I got a model. So now you solve a big problem, as I said earlier, the challenge, we don't have a model. Okay, now we have a model for anything you want to learn. It doesn't matter how complex it will be. So that's become very powerful, right? So now you have a model, now you have a data you can learn, then you can do anything you want to. So that's actually the breakthrough. I thought this is a breakthrough for the AIs. With this breakthrough, now we don't have the challenge to solve a problem. So that's why I always asking the question why all of a sudden in the recent years, AI become so popular because we can solve any problem we want to solve because we can find a model. So that's what I call the real breakthrough. So this guy who invented this guy actually got a, the Nobel Prize. Okay, now um, answer the second question, okay? Um, how are we going to evaluate how good the model will be? So basically, in the learning process, 
we have the observed data, we have predict data. So you just compare the two data, and then the difference, you can calculate the accuracies. So how accurate should it be for a model? Normally, you want to get at least 80%, 90%, don't go to 100%. Why? Data is not pure data. Your data has noise in there. You try to be 100%, you learn the noises. So it doesn't really help. You have to be around 80 to 90% is good enough. OK, um, now how are you going to improve the model? So you, you can always add neurons, as I said, OK? You add the neurons, you improve the accuracy of the model. You can add the neuron in one layer or in different layers. So that's, uh, you, that's why uh, I think back to a few years ago in a classroom, we're talking about 128 layers. By the time we think, that's a lot of layers. The, if the model is com too complicated, you have to simplify the, the model. Uh, most of the time, you have to do some pre-processing. So that's um, uh, the, the idea. You know, whenever uh, when you have a model, you have to see you don't want to overfit because you, you are also fitting the noises. And you don't want to underfit because uh, model, the model is too simple. You just want to find a good fit. So that's the model uh, in our classroom. You can see that there are three layers, uh, roughly nine or 10 uh, neurons. So you can do a, a simple calculation. This is about 400 parameters. Okay, this is a good model for our classrooms. So that's the better than the single parameter models I, sh I show you in the one neurons. Okay, this model will be good enough for study. In the classroom, we use this model. You can build that from scratch. Actually, you can use that for many simulations. Okay, now in reality, okay, now it's said, okay, what what the um, the like open AI, what the parameters are in open AI, 3.5, roughly 20 billion. That's a big number, 20 billion. What about 4.0? Guess trillions. Nobody know how many parameters they have. So that's to give you an idea. Okay, um, the computer machine learning itself pretty straightforward. All we have to do is find a model, learn the parameters, that's the knowledge, and then you solve the problem. So what really amazing here is our computers have the way, a capacity to keep growing. How fast do they grow? You might estimate six months, 1,000 times. That's how fast the computer can grow. So that's the reason that AI, even very simple models, but it can do much um, better work than most of human brains. So in my opinion, no any human being can beat the computers. And then they keep growing. So I always said, okay, uh, our brains, right, even give you 10, 20, uh, 10, 20 years, you're not going to double. But computers, one thousand times in six months. So that's the main thing I'm going to talk about uh, today. And machine learning itself is pretty straightforward. All we have to collect data, define a model. Now we have a very generic model. If the model is not good enough, we do some pre-processing and then get a model good enough. And then uh, you do training. Training is iterations. As you have enough computing power, you keep doing the iterations. You will figure out all the parameters. Those parameters are the knowledge you learn. When use this knowledge, then you can predict uh, any new outcome. So that's basically about machine learning. So you, after these 10 minutes, I hope you have a much better understanding of this machine learning. It's nothing really sophisticated. Everyone can do it. So what's the, the power of AI? It's really the AI grow very fast. So you can see in six months, they can grow 1,000 times. That's why the, my conclusion, like AI is coming. AI is the AI um, era. And then AI can have a very profound impact on our lives. So that's my topic. Everyone should learn AI. The AI is for everyone. Thank you.